In this video, I am transforming this Basque Provincial Dresser by Drexel. We're taking care of some structural issues, trying out a new primer, and turning this into a statement piece of furniture that will last for years to come. Join me and let's take this dresser from drab to fab. Good. Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I have arrived on my chariot and this chariot needs a makeover. <laughs> so I was searching Facebook Marketplace and found this for $50 actually from a local follower. So shout outs to Liz. Thanks so much for a great deal on this amazing piece of furniture. And Facebook Marketplace is not the only app I love to use on my phone. I love to use June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game with a captivating detective story taking you back to the glamour of the 1920s with a diverse cast of characters. Each new scene takes you through a thrilling murder mystery story that sets the main protagonist June Parker in a quest to solve the murder of her sister and uncover the family's many secrets. When I'm just hanging out and just want to take a little load off and relax, I use June's Journey because it reminds me of like my love for true crime. I'm able to search on that app a lot like I do on Facebook Marketplace. Um, but June's Journey is an app that you get to find like hidden objects through the game. So check out June's Journey. The link is down below in the description for the download of that app. So thanks so much to June's Journey for sponsoring sponsoring today's video and being a longtime supporter of the channel. I love that app. You guys won't be disappointed when you download it and play along. I am going to go ahead and remove all of the hardware. And I wanted to mention to you that this is a Drexel piece of furniture. So this thing is solid wood and it is so, so stinking heavy that I know when I'm finished with this, it's gonna last for so much longer down the road. And I'm glad I'm saving it from the landfill. So I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna use these pieces of hardware again, like once it's finished, if I'm just gonna like jazz them up a little bit and reuse them, or if I should use new hardware. And there's a couple of things that go through my head. Like I feel like these give it still that vintage look, but then sometimes just updating the hardware would be nice too to give it a new, more modern look that costs extra money, thus less profits. And so to be determined, so stick around to the end and let me know down below in the comments, what do you usually like to do? You like to keep the original hardware and replace it at the end? Or do you like to get new hardware, fill the holes and uh, make it look a little bit more modern? It's definitely a dilemma that goes through my head every project. So sometimes the hardware has like these back plates and they're not connected with the same hardware screws. They're connected with a little like pin nail. So you just have to, in order to um, take it off, you just have to kind of get a little, either a screwdriver or like a putty knife or something to just help pry up that um, nail so that you can get it off of the surface so that you can clean. And you wanna kinda of be careful so that you're not like gouging the wood at all either. It's time to clean, so I'm gonna use some simple green and just spray the heck out of this piece. It has been sitting in a garage before this, and then it's just seen better days, honestly. It's pretty grimy, so we need to start by cleaning it so that uh, we can get all of the oil and dust and grime off of the surface so we can start with a clean slate. This top is really failing as well, the finishes. So uh, definitely gonna have to be sanding that off so that we make sure we have a good place to start with like a fresh clean slate. Um, if you just painted directly over the failing finish, then your finish that you put on top of it will also fail because if it doesn't start with a good um, surface, then it's just gonna continue to fail, fail, fail. 
So I know I do a lot of the same things over and over and over from flip to flip to flip, but I've really nailed down this system and that's how I'm able to get, you know, the profits that I get. I know the outcome that is going to come from the steps that I take. And I'm just trying to make sure that you guys know that. And if you're a beginner, just know that the more repetitions and, pre and uh, practice that you get on these steps, the better and better your experience is going to get. And then thus a better end result and thus more profits because you can stand behind your quality pieces of furniture. With that being said, I am gonna get to sanding. And I think I already said this, but this finish on the top especially is failing. So we are just going to strip back the top all the way and I'm gonna use my surf prep here. It's just gonna help me get that, that uh, stripped off real quick. And I'm gonna use a 120 grit. Um, this is solid wood, so it would be okay to use an 80 grit, but I think literally because it's such a failing finish, 120 will be just perfect. And actually, I take that back. It, I mean, it, the whole thing is solid wood, but I do think there's a thin layer of veneer on the top of the solid wood, so I do want to be a little bit careful when I'm sanding. All right, so now that we've got the top here sanded nice and smooth and uh, got all that failing finish off. I am just going to continue on with my sander and I'm going to scuff sand everything now with just a 220 grit and I do have my foam abrasive uh, attachment on here just because there are a lot of curves and I don't want to damage any of that uh, but I do want to rough up the surface a little bit for just better adherence and then also just sanding out like any imperfections that might be like super superficial and uh, just could take away from the overall look uh, and the final result. So we're gonna go and scuff sand. Okay, now that I got all of the sanding done, it's time to wrap the drawers. So sometimes I wrap the drawers, sometimes I don't wrap the drawers if I'm gonna be spraying a piece. And for this piece, um, this would be a fine piece to leave the drawers in and spray them like that. Um, but then I would have to go back and uh, paint along the edges, which again, I can do. I think that honestly, wrapping the drawers versus leaving them in is totally a personal preference thing. And on this project particularly, I just feel like doing the whole wrapping and um, putting them in later on. So that's what we're gonna do. And I have my trusty blue painter's tape with the plastic on there so that it can just wrap the drawer perfectly and I won't get any paint on areas that I don't want paint. So like the sides here, the bottom, and then I like to cover the dovetail spots as well so that they don't get sprayed on. So now that all of the drawers are wrapped and I'm basically ready for priming. I need to figure out this little structural issue that we're having with the dresser. So right down here um, is just not looking good. It's like not all the way in, it's not tight. So the dresser kind of goes back and forth like this, which obviously is not good because it, feel, it kind of feels like it could just fall apart at any moment. Um, it's not going to, but I think all I need to do is like, tap this up but i need to flip it on its back so that i can just see what's going on under there uh, and then we can do what we need to do to fix it i did it sweet uh, that's all i thought it was so it doesn't move now at all so all i did was kind of like hammered it back in place and then i secured it with some brad nails and we're all good now so hip hip we're ready to prime i am going to be using a product that I am going to be also like reviewing and testing because I've never actually heard of it. Someone brought it to my attention that this was even a product, someone in our um, coaching group. And she was asking if anyone had used it yet. And I was like, no, I haven't used that. But like, you know, now that you say that I'm intrigued and I'm interested. So I went to the store and I saw if they had it and they did. The primer is called Bin Advanced and it is a synthetic shellac 
primer, which this might look really familiar because the, the can is not very different from the Ben Shellac based primer, which is, it has shellac in it and it's really difficult to clean, but it is so good at blocking bleed through and stains, just odors and like literally everything. It's like the almighty and it has also some really great bonding properties. But this one is supposed to have all of those same things, but it's water-based. It's synthetic shellac. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I haven't really done that much research. I'm weary or unsure if this is gonna work. Uh, but if you can see that there, it's gray primer. The reason that I'm doing a gray primer is because I am doing like a green color paint. And so instead of doing like a stark white and going from a stark white to a darker green color, uh, I just decided to go ahead and try the gray because it's not as vast of a difference in color. So we were gonna put it in the Wagner Flexio 5000. I've got my strainer here, and then we're just gonna go ahead and dump it in. And I literally just bought this from the store like an hour or two ago, so it's already mixed all good. If yours does sit for a while, make sure you're stirring it, um, any product, but since mine was just mixed up, we're all good there. Sometimes primers are like thinner than paints. And so that was super quick to go through my strainer when I'm using like a chalk paint or a mineral paint. It kind of takes a little while to get all the way through cause it's just thicker. Um, but that went really uh, fast through my strainer. It's all ready. So I'm gonna put this on. We're gonna start with the drawers. I already have them all wrapped up and ready to go. Again, there's no true way to know if it's completely working until the actual end result of the whole project and we get the paint on and everything uh, just to see if it bleeds through. Now I did read on the container that sometimes the, you'll still see some like water stains or things popping through even after one layer and that it's okay that the stain is like locked into place and it won't go through to your like top coat or your paint coat. Again, I'm a little skeptical about that. So if I do see things like that, I may do a second, well, I probably will do a second coat. Primer is not only great for like uh, blocking stains and bleed through and bonding, but it's also a great uh, thing to do for um, like highlighting imperfections that are in your piece of furniture. And once you get that white or gray primer on there, you'll really be able to see some like uh, little gouges or little divots and things dense that you may not have seen when it's just wood. So usually I do one coat of primer, fill in different areas, and then I'll do a second coat of primer after I sanded those all smooth. Let's see if this stuff works. It sprays like a dream. Honestly, it's like the perfect consistency to where I didn't have to water it down. Now you can water it down a little bit. It says so on the can, but I didn't need to at all. It's very, it's like thin enough. But since the drawers are done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring in the big dresser. And I think I do need to tape some areas real quick. There's where I don't want some primer. I kind of forgot to do that before we uh, hopped on here, but We'll get that in here and then we'll spray the big guy. All right, so I usually like to tape off for sure the drawer slides just so that they don't get gunked up. Drawer is dry. I'm seeing like some, maybe some bleed through, but like on the um, can, it says that, you know, you might still see some color, but that's okay because it's still, it's like locking it in place and it won't go through to your surface. So we'll see, but like all of these markings you see here is like the wood green. 
and I don't want that to be on my finished product. I want it to be nice and smooth and flat and no wood grain. So I'm gonna be putting some wood filler to fill that in, sanding it back and doing one more coat of primer. So I think that the additional coat of primer will for sure lock that in. Since I did that on the top here too, I went all the way down to raw wood. I'm gonna have to do some grain filling, some wood filling into there because, you know, if you wanna up your game, you're gonna have to continue to get rid of those flaws. They're not flaws, they're just like, it's like the wood grain. And when I've got a painted surface, I don't really wanna be able to see that wood grain. And I don't wanna see like patches of wood grain where some of it has wood grain and some of it is more of a slick space. Like there's no wood grain, it's like flat. So that's what I'm gonna do once this primer dries. Okay, just a quick little uh, update. The primer's drying and the drawers are dry. The dresser's still drying a little bit. But I think this might be my new favorite primer. And you guys, like it's cheap. I'm still obviously figuring out if it's work, if it's gonna work for the stain blocking. Um, and we won't truly know until the very end of the project. But um, after the coat one, we're seeing like, just like a little bit of color popping through. Uh, but the can says that even if you see the color popping through, it's okay. It's locked in and it won't pop through to the top coat. So we're gonna hold them to it. Uh, you can see some like wood grain here. And so I'm gonna need to fill in that wood grain with some wood filler and then sand that back. And we'll do another coat of primer just to cover that in and make sure everything is one surface like like surface even surface and it's so faint but it is there and uh so that's my review so far so stay tuned to see how this primer holds up all the way to the end of the project So I decided that I want to fill in this little crack around the this like inner portion of the dresser and the outer trim portion. So I'm going to use all purpose Bondo uh, because this is just the most strong. It's going to hold up over time and it's not going to shrink in there. So one layer should be enough around the whole um, line and then I will be able to uh, just go ahead and sand it down and it'll all hold up and that line will be gone, be all smoothed out. All right, so now that all of my uh, spot putty is sanded down and we're all smooth, I think I filled all of the wood green and stuff. Uh, I am ready to go ahead and do coat number two of the primer. This is just gonna give me one more even coat and then make sure that that bleed through is really locked in. There was only one, well, aside from maybe one of the drawers, there was one spot on the top of the dresser where I felt like like I could see some of the water stains popping through. But again, it said that's okay, it locks in place. Still may do some shellac after this little uh, run of primer, but we're gonna prime, coat number two. It's finally time to paint. All that prep work is necessary, but the most fun part is getting some color on the furniture. So I am gonna be using the color Acadia by Dixie Bell. It is this really pretty green color. And um, then I'm gonna be putting a little bit of Floetrol in with my paint into the sprayer. And Floetrol basically is just going to act as uh, a, it's, it's a product that basically makes the paint kind of dry for longer. It keeps it wet a little longer and it's gonna help it self level really well. So I like to use it when I'm spraying 
because it gives it that much more time to dry. And I just mix it up into my uh, spray container and you still wanna strain it just like you do with the paint itself because you never know what types of chunks might be in the actual flow trawl as well. This kind of also thins it out a little bit, but not as much as um, water would thin it out. So uh, you kind of want to do one or the other, not flow trawl and water. So I'm going to dump my whole jar in here. Got a nine drawer dresser, so it's a pretty large piece. And I'm expecting to use this whole thing, if not more. Okay, so we'll let that kind of drain in there. I don't really measure you know how much flow trawl I actually put in there. There are some instructions on there. It's about four to eight ounces per pint, I believe. So, I mean, I think that's plenty from what I just put in there. And then again, flow trawl, it is a white substance, but it's not gonna really affect the coloring of the paint itself. You would think that it would kind of lighten it up a little bit, but it really doesn't. So that's another good thing about it. Once all that's in there, then I'll make sure to mix all that around and we'll be able to spray. That's a big piece, but it was sprayed, I don't know, in like less than 10 minutes. So I really love this color and it go, it went on flawless. So we're gonna let this dry and then come back for coat number two. We're ready for coat two. Did I say I'm loving the color? Cause I'm really loving the color. It's got great coverage, but we do need a second coat. And with silk paint, you're gonna need a second coat regardless if you got full, full coverage on coat one, just so that the all-in-one, uh, the top coat properties can actually do their job and that it's like durable enough. So coat number two, here we come. It is time for the home stretch here. We're gonna work on the hardware. So with the hardware, I went back and forth on what look I really wanted to go with the hardware. I thought about changing it to new hardware. And then I just decided that this hardware really goes with the piece. I mean, it came on it originally, but it it's really patinaed. And so I just didn't like how it is looking now. I definitely think it needs to be freshened up, but I do wanna keep its original character and look. So I was toying with the idea of going with like a gold, but I feel like that is kind of not getting played out, but getting played out for lack of a better term. And I just wanted to try something new, switch it up a bit. I always do gold, I see gold a lot. And so instead of gold, I'm gonna be trying out some bronze gilding wax here. So all I'm gonna do is take a brush and the gilding wax and then just brush it on to the surface. And then what gilding wax does is it just kind of changes the color. It's an oil-based wax, so you don't have to do any sort of top coat. And once it's dry and hardened up, it will not come off over time. I have this stuff in my own house, on my own furniture, and we've been using it for a, lot, for a long time now. Nothing has ever came off on my hand, so it is good to go once everything is dried up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the six handles and the little knobs, and then we'll be able to put everything back together. 
So I decided on this piece that I am gonna be lining the drawers with this pretty leaf pattern and it kind of goes with the color of the dresser. I had it on hand, I was gonna use it for another project a long time ago. Didn't end up using it on that one so I figured why not use it on this one. So I've just got a couple of more drawers left here to line up and then we'll be able to put everything back together. Ta -da! We are done with this piece and I love how it turned out. I don't think I could have pictured it any better than it truly turned out. Again, I was just kind of not sure about what the final result was gonna be because I was hesitant on what color I wanted to do. I was hesitant on what hardware situation I wanted to do, but I'm, I think that all in all, it turned out a very well-rounded piece. And I'm really glad that I just stuck with my gut and tried something new with the hardware. I think that kind of tones down the whole look of the dresser and the hardware is not really like in your face as sometimes I feel like the gold or the brass could be. So we want to talk about the numbers real quick of this piece. And so I got this piece for $50 off of Facebook Marketplace, a really great buy-in for such a solid piece of furniture. And then I paid $10 for primer, $37 for paint since I used a can and a half, uh, about $3 worth of gilding wax, probably honestly even less than that. And then the drawer liner was about $15 off of Amazon. And then between, you know, the tape, the plastic, the sanding, the wood filler, all of that was around $15. Um, I had it all on hand, but just using he some here and there in uh, across multiple projects, it kind of, you know, don't forget to add that type of thing into your total cost. So we're all in at a total of $130. And this piece is not yet on Facebook Marketplace. I literally just got it done, but I'm thinking we're gonna go um, around seven or eight hundred dollars with this piece. It's <gasps> It's so heavy, it's Drexel, it's well made, and honestly, like the finish, I mean, it's just all around a great piece. So I'm gonna try and hold out for that on Marketplace, and then we're also gonna have it here in our store and online. We can ship it if you're interested in that type of thing. Uh, but really quick also, I want to talk about the primer that I used because that was a new product to me. So for this primer, it was the Bin Advanced synthetic shellac and it was water-based and I honestly think that it's one of my new favorite products. Um, I wasn't really gonna be able to tell if I liked it or if it did what it said it was gonna do until the very end of the project and I am pleasantly surprised because there is absolutely zero bleed through anywhere on my piece and you know, after one coat or uh, or one coat of the primer, I was having some watermarks come through. And again, I just stuck with what that can said. And it said, even if it is looking like there's some watermarks coming through or bleed through, it's locked in there. It won't go through to your top coat and it truly did its job. So definitely check it out. Uh, for me, it was cheaper than the bin shellac base. So just check your uh, local hardware stores. I'll link it down below on uh, Amazon just so you know exactly what you are looking for when you are trying out that. And then don't forget, you can also tint it. So if you're going a darker color, you may want to tint it to like a gray versus going from stark white to such a drastic change of a color. So we are super excited because we're, we've been working a little bit more behind the scenes and we have a five day challenge coming up really soon. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be an amazing experience. And then also I hope you guys have been really enjoying the thrifting content and the Monday content that we've been putting out. It's been really fun to just go outside of the 
the box and just flipping the furniture. You know, we've got to source stuff. Thrifting always doesn't turn out like we want it to. There's sometimes we find great stuff, sometimes we don't, but I love taking you guys along on the ride. And also the motivational content, the kind of business side or the flip side of only of not only actually painting the furniture but the more mindset behind it and our thinking behind some of the the systems that we've got in place and we're just excited to be able to share that with you guys this year so thanks so much for watching get subscribed down below and i'll see you on the flip side